Hi, I'm Robin Bogner, Professor of Pharmaceutics at University of Connecticut and a past chair of the NIPTI Faculty Committee. It's my honor and pleasure to say a few words today in tribute to Dr. Ajaz Hussein. Before my esteemed colleagues tell you about the many accomplishments of Dr. Hussein, I'd like to give you sort of a big picture of what has made him so effective in moving the field forward as he has. In fact, it is his ability to take a step back and see the bigger picture that makes Dr. Hussein's perspective and contributions so unique and valuable. He generously shares these perspectives with others with great energy and enthusiasm, I might add. Ajaz is one of those folks we call a Renaissance man or Renaissance woman, meaning that they have wide interests and expertise. Ajaz is a Renaissance man because he's as much a philosopher as he is a scientist, and he's well known for thinking big, like global public health big. So today I'd like to share some of the big picture philosophical concepts I've learned from Ajaz. I consider these to be sort of the Tao of pharmaceuticals, right? the pharmaceutical industry. Much like the titles, the Tao of statistics and the Tao of programming have been borrowed from the popular book, the Tao of Pooh, referring to the beloved children's character, Winnie the Pooh, I took the liberty of titling my talk, the Tao of pharmaceuticals. In this context, Tao refers to the art of doing something in harmony with the essential nature of that subject. In this case specifically, I mean it to refer to a deeper understanding of the longer term consequences of any actions we as pharmaceutical scientists and regulators have on global society. So let's begin. If you are unfamiliar with the word epistemology, you haven't spoken with Ajaz or been to one of his presentations or read one of his papers lately. Epistemology is the study of or theory of the nature and grounds of knowledge, especially with reference to its limits and validity. Let me repeat this because most of us scientists were never meant to be English majors in college and for a really good reason. Epistemology is the study or a theory of the nature and grounds of knowledge, especially with reference to its limits and validity. This is important because Ajaz has been searching for the limits or constraints um, that are barriers to achieving ideal pharmaceutical quality, that is, consistent pharmaceutical quality for many years now. Another word you must know to understand what Ajaz, the philosopher, is trying to teach us is ontology. Ontology is a branch of metaphysics concerned with the nature and relations of being or existence. So what is metaphysics? Well, metaphysics is a division of philosophy concerned with the fundamental nature of reality. And it includes ontology, cosmology, which I won't go into, and often epistemology, which we already covered. There you have it. Now you can understand a portion of the conclusion slide that Ajaz presented in uh, 2016, where he wrote, various ontological assumptions and weak epistemology curtails knowledge sharing. Honestly, the first time I saw that slide, I knew I had some serious studying to do. I figured that Ajaz Hussein must spend a lot of time reading, not just about the pharmaceutical industry, both the scientific side and the business incentives, but much more broadly. The next time I saw him, I asked, what good books have you read lately? And so would begin my deeper understanding of human nature and how our flaws, well, not really our flaws because they're human nature, influence pharmaceutical quality. I read the first book he suggested, Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman, a great read by a world famous uh, psychologist who won a Nobel Prize in economics. That's right, a psychologist who won a Nobel Prize in economics. Among the other things it teaches, well, it turns out that we don't make rational choices in our purchasing decisions, as was the uh, premise of economics for many, many years. So how does this relate to the actions in the pharmaceutical industry? Well, not all actions are rational there either unless we were all able individually to move to a higher level. Now we're ready for another important word to understand, Procrustean. 
Honestly, Ajaz doesn't make up these words, but as a student who avoided literature courses at all costs, I thought so for a while. The word procrustean comes from Greek mythology, another topic I avoided in college. Turns out there was a fellow, I guess a god or demigod, named Procrustes. When Procrustes offered his home to weary travelers for a rest, he forced them to fit into the guest beds by, by either cutting off their legs or physically stretching their bodies. So Procrustean often refers to decisions that are arbitrary or that disregard individual dis differences and special circumstances. Think for a moment about how this might relate to the pharmaceutical industry or academia. I see such behavior all the time in very junior graduate students when they extrapolate the settings for a certain instrument um, from those used by a senior graduate student, not taking into account that their sample is very different. Think special circumstances. Well, Ajaz used the word procrustean to describe how many in the industry set product and pro process specifications and also some regulatory aspects as well. He urged us to move beyond procrustes and explained that the evolution of our consciousness as taught by Professor Robert Keegan uh, in his many books on the five orders of consciousness could help us move forward. The first order of consciousness refers to how the two-year-old views the world. The second order, at the second order or the second stage, we understand now the permanence of objects. Many operate their entire life at the third order, in which we understand human relationships and a lot about them, and why we must follow the rules and uh, the general order of society. Dr. Hussein suggests, however, that to move the pharmaceutical industry forward, we must, we must each individually move to the fourth level, the fourth stage of the fourth order, in which we're self-guided, self-motivated, and self-evaluative, right? the self-authoring mind. This makes the setting of process and product specifications more than following what was done for the last product. At the fifth order of consciousness, we become self-transforming, able to make transformational changes and lead others through the transformation. So you see, Ajaz uses these big picture ideas to understand how to improve the pharmaceutical industry and product quality more specifically. More importantly, Ajaz uses every opportunity to teach us these concepts, to encourage a broader cohort to conceive of their own solutions and improvements. So we move from the third order, which is an immunity to change, as described in a later Keegan book, um, through to the fourth order, where we do problem solving, finally to the fifth order, where um, we actually prevent errors. In one of my last conference calls with Ajaz Hussein regarding what uh, NIPTI might do about drug shortages due to the pandemic, about seven to ten of us were contributing ideas to a list of drugs that were needed but in shortage. Ajaz said, I think I heard him say, I'll ask my mother. Now any man or woman, I suppose, but mostly man, who invokes his mother on a conference call has my great admiration. Sadly, his mom has passed since then, and so I thought any remarks in appreciation of Ajaz would really not be complete without honoring the woman who raised such a Renaissance man. What I've tried to do in this short talk is to share some of the big picture philosophical concepts that I've learned from Ajaz in hopes that I've encouraged you to take the time, as I did, to learn more about them. This fine man has taught me so much. I bet he doesn't really even know that. Until now, my greatest tribute to him then would be to entice some of you to look into his writings. Be prepared to struggle to truly and deeply learn from them. Have a dictionary and your favorite web search tool nearby. But in honor of Ajaz Hussein, let's all move up to the next order of consciousness so we can transform the pharmaceutical industry to its ideal state. Thank you.